You are always manifesting. Did you know that? Do you know what the law of assumption is? Or are you just well versed in the law of attraction? Something that relies on an entity outside of you to provide your desire. Law of assumption is relying on you and you alone. Your human imagination, your subconscious mind. Your mind creates your reality. And when you finally get this, when the penny drops, you'll understand what the law of assumption is and you'll understand that you are always manifesting and now you can just manifest what you want. Law of assumption was taught by Neville Goddard. If you haven't heard of him and he's written all these books and many more and has many, many lectures on YouTube that you can listen to and it's best to listen to him in his own voice. He was taught by a rabbi called Abdullah and based all of the law of assumption on teachings in the Bible because the law of assumption part two and what it's got to do with manifesting. So the law of assumption was taught by Neville Goddard who was taught by Abdullah who taught him to interpret the Bible in many different ancient languages and what the Bible tells you is as within so without and you can interpret this to mean as within you your thoughts within your mind as without in your 3D world and that means your 3D reality you've created and it's simply a reflection of your old assumptions your old beliefs about yourself and others and the situations that you find yourself in this is the law of assumption okay so it means that you can assume new thoughts and it will create a new reality which is quite empowering when you think about it it's not an entity outside of you doing things for you it's simply your human imagination and your subconscious mind reflecting out into the world, which you can change because you create your reality. The Law of Assumption, Part 3. So if you create your reality and you can accept that, and it's a hard thing to accept because sometimes you create some really shitty reality. And the thing about manifestation is, and when you really get this, you create your bad circumstances as well as the good ones. Some people think that manifestation is all about just creating what you want. Unfortunately, you also create what you don't want with your thoughts. Okay? You have to accept that to get this. All right? Because that means you can change all of it, including the bad stuff. And the way you do that is to live in the end, to assume you already are already the man or woman you want to be. How would you be? If you stepped into that role of that person who had their desire, okay, and that is a feeling of it being done. It's not an emotion. Neville wrote a book called Feeling is the Secret. He didn't mean emotional feeling. He meant feeling it is done. The Law of Assumption, part four. So if you are going to live in the end and step into the person you want to be to get your desire, how does that then reflect back into your 3D reality? Well, if you are living in the end and in your mind you are already there, then what is happening in the outside world doesn't affect you because you know you're changing it, okay? So you're literally not reacting to the shitty circumstances and it means that circumstances don't matter. Now, you've probably heard that a lot in manifestation teachings, but it's really true because you create the circumstances, therefore you can change them with your mind. So the basis of law of assumption is all about accepting responsibility for creating your reality in the first place and knowing that with your mind you can change it with your thoughts that your dominant thoughts create your reality and so to change your reality all you need to do is live in the end and change your dominant thoughts to the law of assumption part five so what I was saying was you need to replace your dominant thoughts that are negative or not doing what you want with thoughts that do give you what you want and are more positive. Now, it's not positive, negative in terms of you have to feel positive. You're just replacing the thought to what you want. So if your thought is, um, I am not chosen, you want to replace that to, I'm always chosen, I'm the priority. Now, you don't have to feel positive all the time to do that. You're literally just changing it to a more positive thought that helps you get you what you want. If you want a new car and you keep thinking, oh, I hate this crummy car of mine I've got at the moment, you just think, I love my new car. You are living in the end of having a new car, okay? But you don't have to be driving the car thinking, oh my God, I love this new car and be in love and have feelings of passion and feeling. It's not about emotion. It's just feeling it is done. You have the new car. You are chosen. You are the priority. If you want to be married, you say, I am now happily married. You live in the end of being married.
Law of Assumption, part six. So I spoke about how your thoughts create your reality, that reality is just a reflection of your thoughts and how to change your reality, you must change your dominant thoughts to thoughts of what you do want and you've got to live in the end of already having what you want, feeling it is done. Now, to do all of this, you need to understand that the only thing you are changing is you, <laughs> not the other people. So many people jump into manifestation, think they're magically waving wands and changing their ex-boyfriend into what they want, okay? Or changing their spouse into how they want them to behave. No, no, no. You're changing your assumptions about them, your assumptions about you, and your assumptions about, say, relationships in general that's causing the situation with your ex or with your spouse. You're not changing them. You're changing you. Neville Goddard spoke about there is no one to change but self. Once you change your self-concept, and your beliefs and your assumptions, you the law of assumption, part seven. So once you change your thoughts about you, others and situations, you change your reality. But it's about changing you. So how do you do this? How do you change you? I mean, this is the lifelong question, isn't it? How do I change myself? <sighs> The thing is, you could go to therapy and sit around doing therapy and go back into your past all you like, but simply all you need to do, and I can say this as someone who's done a lot of fucking therapy, you just change your thoughts because your dominant thoughts create, and those dominant thoughts are what have been in your subconscious mind your whole life, and they're just on a tape playing and playing and playing. So you replace those to replace how you feel about you, and that's your self-concept, and therefore that will outpicture in the outside world, and people will treat you differently, and your situations will change because you now have new beliefs about yourself because you've changed the tape running in your subconscious mind by changing your dominant thoughts, and that creates your reality anew, okay? The Law of Assumption, Part 8. So, how do we change our dominant thoughts about ourselves, others, and situations? Right. This is where affirmations and visualization come in. This is why everywhere people are doing affirmations, but I'm not sure if a lot of people know why they're doing them. You're doing it because they're just new thoughts, and you're going to use them to replace the old thoughts. That's why you repeat affirmations. The repetition of the affirmation is what makes it sink into your subconscious mind. So think about this logically. If you're as old as I am, and I'm old, you've had years and years and years and decades of those thoughts running through your mind that are fucking up your reality. So now you need to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat new thoughts that will create the new reality you want to kill those old subconscious thoughts that are fucking your reality up. So that's affirmations. Then visualization is stepping into the man or woman you want to be by visualizing who you would be if you're living in the end of having it, having it already. So you visualize a scene, maybe a Law of Assumption, part nine, visualization. Now, how to visualize. Lots of people think up big, huge, long scenes. That's fine if you want to do that. But what Neville taught, Neville Goddard, again, was to just choose a short scene. It could be a congratulatory scene, someone shaking your hand and congratulating you, or someone throwing you a party, celebrating your new job. Or it could be 50 years after your wedding and it's your 50 year wedding anniversary, it's a short 10 second scene or a three second scene or someone's just saying a word to you or clinking a glass, okay? And you loop that and loop that and loop that and loop that scene as a visualization, visualization, just like an affirmation. You're sinking it into your mind as a new scene that happened, as a new thing that's been a reality for you. And then your subconscious mind thinks, oh, this has happened, has it? Oh, that's great, I'm married now, am I? And you're convincing your subconscious mind that this is really you now. You are now the man or woman you want to be. And that is the point of visualization, to live in the end of having what you want already. Law of Assumption and Manifestation, part 10. So let's go through the steps. You've realized you create your reality with your thoughts. Your dominant thoughts create. So that means you can change your 3D reality because your 3D reality is dead because you created it with your old thoughts. <sighs> so now you do visualization and affirmations or one or the other to change your dominant thoughts to new ones and then you will step into the person you want to be and live in the end. And you'll convince your subconscious mind that you are now the person you want to be. Great. What do you do in the meantime? You do not let go. You do not give up. You persist. Persist, persist, persist until, as Neville said, it hardens into fact. You do not give up. All this letting go bullshit. You let go of the how, yes. You let go of the old story you had about yourself, others and the situation, and you let go of resistance you have against it, but you do not let go of the affirmations or the visualization. You live in the end and you persist until it hardens into 
Law of Assumption, part 11. So, I've told you to persist. Persist until it hardens into fact. So your question might be, Loz, what the fuck do I do while I'm persisting? And just waiting, and waiting, and waiting for my manifestation to turn up. You do nothing. Now I know this sounds fucking bizarre. But, you do not look for signs. You do not look for angel numbers. Because that is you needing reassurance that it's coming is it is it here yet is it coming well first of all that means you're not living in the end because if you're living in the end in your mind you would know it it's already here and you wouldn't need a fucking sign so stop looking for signs first of all secondly you persist and persist and you literally do nothing in your outside world to force the reality to do anything. Yes, you go about your daily life. You go and do your career if it's about your career. Okay, you still stay in your relationship with your person if you're wanting the person to change. You don't split up. Okay, but you don't do action that is forcing law of assumption and how to manifest properly, part 12. So I've told you to do nothing, which sounds strange, but just trust me on this. You can do inspired action, but you won't know that's inspired until after, okay? And I know that sounds strange, but you will look back on a bridge of incidents that occurred that made you act in the way you did, and you didn't really realize at the time why you're doing it, but then later when you've got your manifestation, you'll go, oh, that's why I did that, okay? That's what inspired action is, so please don't use inspired action to text your ex when you should just be imagining they text you, all right? So, inspired action is part of the do nothing. But also, you would have heard in a lot of manifestation teachings that don't worry about the how. That is that saying in the Bible, his ways are past finding out. So you live in the end, but you don't worry about how that end is going to come about. And that is the do nothing, okay? You're not forcing the 3D to give you what you want. You literally trust the universe to provide. The law of assumption, part 13. The universe will provide. I hate that expression, but you've all probably heard it. What that means is that the universe will conspire to assist you in what it is you are wanting and what it is you're imagining in your mind you already have because you're living in the end. Therefore, things will start to move in your outside world to make it so. So I'll give you an example of this and where I did nothing except imagine in my mind that it was already done. When I was 19, I wanted to go to a drama school called NIDA in Australia. And so I heard somewhere that you always say, I am such and such if you want something, which is absolutely true because that's your consciousness, I am blah. So I kept saying to myself, I am a NIDA student, I am a NIDA student, I am a NIDA student. And the whole year I was saying that. I did the audition, I got shortlisted, I got the phone call, I was waiting for them to say you're in, they said, you're not in. And I was so devastated. But I thought, hang on, but I am a NIDA student. I am a NIDA student. I just couldn't understand why I wasn't a NIDA student. Two weeks later, they ring me up. You're in. Someone dropped out. I was in. That's the of assumption part 14. In the last video, I spoke about how the universe will conspire to assist you. I hate the expression the universe, but just the world, the 3D world, will conspire to assist you once you've decided and lived in the end in your mind that you are the man or woman you want to be. So I use the example of me wanting to go to drama school and saying, I am an Ida student. I am an Ida student. And then someone decided to drop out and I got in. Now, I did nothing to make that so. I didn't harass everybody, the 26 other people who got in, say, can you please drop out so I can get in? Okay, I didn't ring and beg and ask them, could I please have a place I've wanted to live, be in this school since I was five years old? I just trusted that I am a NIDA student. I was confused why I wasn't a fucking NIDA student when they said no, but I trusted I was a NIDA student, and two weeks later, I was a NIDA student. And three years later, I graduated, and I was a NIDA graduate. Okay, so that's how this shit works. You trust that... You are already living in the end and everything. The Law of Assumption Part 15, I'm going to give you some examples of how to live in the end properly, okay, and how to do this really visualize or affirm so that you will create the reality you want. So I'll give you another example of what I've done, a success story of mine. So I live in Perth and at the moment there's like, until this week, no coronavirus pretty much in Perth except people in hotels. So the rental market is crazy. Everyone's moving back here and there are no rentals. I was looking at places where there were like 50 applicants for one property. So the day I came to this house, there were 15 people waiting outside in a queue and five people in their cars when I arrived half an hour early. So I got in there and I decided I live here already. I was visualizing myself sitting at that desk up there writing. I was looking at the carpet and saying to the real estate agent, this needs cleaning, that toilet doesn't work. And I was imagining I live there already. Everyone else, five, 15 other applicants offered more money than me, but I got the house. Why? Because in my head, I live there already. This is living in the end. You can either do it with visualization or you could do it of assumption and how to manifest properly the recap. So 
law of assumption is the fact that your thoughts create, your dominant thoughts create your reality and how you change your reality and how you manifest what you want is to change your dominant thoughts. You can do this by visualization or affirming, but in both cases, visualizing or affirming, you must live in the end in your mind as if you already have what it is you want. You are already the man or woman you want to be if you had your desire, okay? How would you be, okay? You would feel it is done. You don't need emotion. You don't need to feel happy joyous all that shit you just need to feel it is done i am that i am that and that's why the words i am are so powerful because you assume you are that person now there is no one to change but self if you want to change others you change your assumptions about yourself your assumptions about them your assumptions about reality and then you will change your reality